Hi and welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to look at joints and we're going to look at specifically how to create contacts within joints, okay, how to add a limit and also how to animate the joints as well. So if you like a copy of the completed model then please check the link in the description below and if you're interested in the previous videos please check those out where we looked at how to create joints and also the actual different types of joints as well. So if we jump into Fusion. So what we've got on the screen here is this uh, assembly of all the components and the ones in red don't move and the ones in green, okay, have been uh, jointed or uh, joints have been applied, okay, so the parts interact in different ways. And if you haven't seen that video, please check that video out of how to create all those different types of joints. So what we're gonna look at now is how to add something called contacts. So when the, the components interact with each other, okay, you'll see they will interact in a natural way. And we're also gonna look at how you can limit that movement as well. So if we um, zoom in, and we don't need to worry about this rigid joint because that would not move, hence the name rigid. But if we have a look at some of these other joints here, if I grab the component that moves, that's the one in green, you can see at that point it should stop. But it's actually, you know, intersecting that body. And again, down here, it's going right through. The same with this one, it will slide past. Okay, and if we go to some of these other ones, you'll see that they'll actually pass through those other components. Okay, that goes, that goes right through the bottom, for example, and so on. Now, if I revert those back to their original state, what we want to do is we want to add contacts so when they come in contact with each other, they will stop. Okay, they physically hit each other. So there's two ways of doing this. So the first way, if we go into Assemble and click Enable Contact Sets, okay, that will appear up here. And what we can do is we can create, if we right click, a new contact set. And we can click the two okay, components we want to create to contact between, click OK. And that's set, okay, contacts within those two components. So when I grab this now, okay, it will actually physically hit and interact, as you can see there. So let's click on revert. I can, okay, turn these contact sets off and on by just clicking here. But what I'm going to do now is going to continue to add some other sets, as you can see. Another thing you can do to make it easy, if you click on there, you can actually name these. So... If I could spell, okay, and hit enter, you can then set contact sets and name those between it. So again, if I right click and go new contact set, click on these two, click OK, just click on that to name it, and hit enter. I've now got a contact set between there. So you see, as it hits that and it hits that, it is slide along there as it should, but it's actually coming into contact. And again, I can go right click new contact set and work our way along and add these sets together like so and you can see they all appear here okay once i've uh, added these sets they can be like i say turned on and off so i'm just going to zoom in on this area here select this one here and we can suppress that so now when we drag that it will intersect okay but if i select it again and turn that back on you can see there, it will then stop. So that's how you can quickly turn the sets on and off by selecting them there. Another thing you can do is, say you wanted, if I just right click and delete those, what we can do, if you want, you can apply all the contact sets across all the components in one go. And that might be what you want, okay, depending on the assembly you've created. And the way to do that is just click on enable or contact. And you can see it's enabled there. Okay, so at the moment it's enabled and again I could turn it all off. So as you can see here now, okay, it's applied contact between all these, okay, components in one go. So if I grab that one, you can see it's going to interact with there unless I turn it around and start sliding that up and down. So that's enabled context right across this assembly in a single go. That will only work once you've applied the joints, okay, to those individual sets that you want to uh, 
assemble. And again, if you want to then turn them all off, okay, you can click on there and go no contact. Okay, and then now you can see they're all turned off, as you can see there. Okay, so that is how you can simply add contact sets within sort of pairing up components and also how you can add contacts across an entire assembly in one click of a button and also how you can turn it off in one click of a button as well. Once you've applied your joints and your contacts you can now set limits for each of the joints as well. So under each of these types of joints apart from rigid okay you can apply limits so if we have a look at the first one, this Revolute or Revolution, and this options under here, I can actually, okay, right click on this and select this option here to show you what limits I put in place to start with. So if we click on that option, you can see how that rotates between two angles, like so. And those angles can be set by right clicking, Edit Joint Limits. And in here, because of the type of joint, which is a revolute, I've only got one option into the types of motions. When we go and have a look at some of the others, we'll have either two, three, or even four options in there. And I've set these limits here. So that's going up 90 degrees, okay, and it's coming down 21 degrees. And I can click play like that. Now what's really good, if I keep that uh, ticked, I can actually go in here now and change this. And just click. And it'll update. So you see what goes far this time. So it only goes to 90, down 10. Okay, from where it was assembled. So you can do this live by clicking on that and changing these dimensions or values in there. Like so. And click cancel. The other thing you could do, say you didn't want that to rotate, you can right click and lock that in place. And therefore that motion will not move. And then what you can do is unlock that by clicking that option there and then it will move so you can okay once you've set okay those limits you can actually lock those in place as well so if we look at the next one the slider and right click and have a preview of that i set that so now it will only move between those two points okay certain limit I click escape to stop that right click select joint limits this time Rather than rotate, I've got slide because it's that it's sliding along that surface of that, of that linear sort of uh, axis along there, and I've set it to forty one point eight, okay, which is basically up to that sort of edge there. I could start it off from zero, or I could type in ten, and now you'll see if I preview that it will go between ten and forty one point eight, okay, and again I can change that to go from the minimum of zero that edge all the way up to that edge there. So that's how you can uh, set that one. If we go to the next one, which is cylindrical, and right click, and we'll go into Edit Joint Limits. This time, because it's a cylindrical one, you do have options of rotate. So if you wanted, for example, that pin to rotate to a certain degree, so at now minus 55, so it goes between that slot down there, you could have it rotating as well okay but because I don't want that to be ticked I just want it to move okay in that direction I've got that set so it goes to the very top and again you can change that okay live so it will only start a certain position there like that okay so click cancel on that one the next one we're going to have a look at is pin and slot if we right click and show what that does. So set limits so it will only rotate to certain angles, okay, as you can see here, and it's only moving a certain distance within the slot as well. So if we right click and go into the options, On this one we can set rotate so how much you want that to rotate between those two points and again you can change this depending on the angles you want 
Then if we go to slide and we go to here, again I've set it to go from 0, which is where it starts from, to the maximum of 31, which is up here. And again you can change that by clicking on those dimensions there and changing those. The other thing you could do for these joints I've got more than one okay, type of motion is you can actually lock one type. So I could say, right, I'm going to lock that in place there. And now, okay, it will only rotate. So if you wanted to lock that linear motion, and the same again, if I unlock that one, okay, unlock that one. You can see now it will not rotate, okay, but it will slide. So you do have options of unlocking and limiting certain okay, options underneath each joint. Next one we're going to look at is the planar. If we go to planar on here and have a look at what I've set, you can see it's uh, moving between okay, those walls corner to corner. And in planar, you have three options. You have the option of the angle and two distances. So if we go into here, okay, rotate would allow this to rotate. So say if I had an arm sticking out here, um, it would then rotate depending on what I set. So if I type in here and give it a preview, you can see it's sort of spinning around or wobbling because it's going 360 around. If I had like an arm coming out here, you see that goes right around, okay, spinning right around 360. So I don't want to add any of that type of motion. I just want to be able to control, okay, that distance. So it's going up 20, okay, 20 in that direction, 20 that direction. And I want to be able to control it, okay, to go that way as well. So 15 by 15. And again, all of these can be changed. If I now go into planar, Okay, and lock in some of those and right click. You can see now it's moving in that direction there. If I click escape, okay, unlock that one. Unlock that in place. You can see now it's moving in that limit between those two points. And because I've got both of them moving, it will move in a sort of corner to corner sort of direction. So it all depends on the limits that you put in place, okay, and if you turn, okay, lock or unlock different types of motion. And the same is with the last one. The ball allows us to control the pitch, the yaw, and the roll. So if you right click on this, you can then type in the limits that you would want each, okay, to spinning and again if you click on each one you can set your limits you can click on the option to move that to see if that's what you want and again if you go into here okay you can lock certain ones of these and then click animate and that depends on let's have a look which ones i lock in place there you go so it's just showing that type of motion, depending on what you want to achieve. So what we've done there is set limits for all of these, okay, and previewed them and edited those limits if you wanted to. Thanks for watching, and if you found this content helpful, please click like and subscribe, and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.